Well, hello and welcome back to the Well After Hours. I'm so glad you could gather with us tonight to have a conversation with my special guest, Minister Mrs. Kalisha Smith on the topic of the Counselor's House of Faith. Welcome back to the well. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be back. I am just blessed to be in your presence and with your awesome viewers. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is all my pleasure. Believe me, it's just so wonderful. When I was thinking about this particular conversation, I was like, I've got to get Kalisha back because it was just so great. I mean, the last time you were here on the well, We were dealing with youth and suicide and that conversation, you know, but as we're going through the pandemic now, so many families, you know, uh, as they are saying, we're just beginning to see the pandemic's effect on family life and, you know, mental wellness. Uh, So as going forward, we were praying, you know, that things will get better. But before it gets better, some other things may be into play. So it's good to be able to have a real conversation with a real mom, a real wife, (laughs) a real (laughs) wife on going through this. But before we get started, could you just tell, I know the viewers saw your bio, but unfortunately we didn't stand along enough where they can maybe read the whole thing, but they'll do a replay of this and just tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay, sure. So I'm Kalisha Smith, and I'm privileged to be a wife to Gerald Wayne Smith Jr., who is the pastor elect of Hope Church in Boundbrook. Grateful to have been married to him going on 17 years. Um, and this coming January, we are college sweethearts, and we're the parents of five daughters. God has blessed us with five girls ranging in age from 19 all the way down to six. Um, So we have every age and stage you could imagine in this house, um, from college to first grade. Um, And so I'm also grateful that I have been working in social services now for uh, about 17 years. Um, And so in the last few years, God has given me the ability to go ahead and get my clinical license. Um, I have a private practice called Wise Counsel Services, where we do um, individual group and family therapy, and also have the privilege of doing consultation and training in the community. Um, And so I'm a minister, and God affords me opportunity to preach and teach, and I love having the opportunity to minister to God's people. And so I'm just grateful to be here today. I'm just a regular mom and wife trying to make it through pandemic times. And that is so awesome uh, because I, I hope today that we can take a few notes from your playbook. <laughs> well, we're going to take but, it from God's playbook. <laughs> but, but I know he's inspiring your playbook. That's why yes. I consider it so yes. safe. So, <laughs> um, so, but you know what, going through this pandemic, I'm sure you have experienced, as you just noted, you have children of all different ages. And here you are juggling many things. I mean, working through the pandemic as a licensed counselor, being a wife, you know, to your wonderful husband and still trying to, you know, navigate with your children through this because the children have been a center of a lot of the discussion through the pandemic too. And so I want to first start off and ask you, as you were going through the pandemic, how did all of those things, I mean, your, your spirituality and your professional, you know, um, perspective, all kind of help you, your family, get through the pandemic as we go through. We're not out of it yet, but I mean, how you're using it to go through the pandemic. So I uh, I was kind of thinking about that uh, a little bit earlier. And um, what God reminded me is he really does give you what you need to get through what you are going to face. Um, he brought back to my mind just this morning, uh, Gideon. And Gideon just felt like, you know, if you remember the story in the Bible, in the beginning, he was like, hide now. There was a lot of craziness going on in his life. And God shows up and is like, I got work for you to do. And he's like, me, I can't do it. And quite often, to be honest, I know what my title says. I know what I'm trying to do here and what I, my purpose is. But there are moments like any of us, that we feel insecure. And what God reminded me is what he said to Gideon, go in the strength that you already have. And so when I think about how um, I've been able to navigate or manage or 
just get through these times. It really has been that God has already gifted each one of us with what we need. We just got to kind of tap into it and lean on him and remember what he already told us. So a lot of this time I've been really getting back to basics. And this is something I talk about with my clients. It's something I talk about with supervisees and my professional job. Talk about with my daughters. I don't call it that because they don't like to be therapized. But I say, you know what? We got to get back to basics. I got to look at, um, are we spending time with God? Are we, are we in his word? Are we praying? Are we fellowshipping? What's our relationship with God like? That's the primary and central thing. The second one is, how's my eating? Right? How, how, am I eating well? What am I taking in? The next one is, how's my sleeping? Because sleep, if you don't sleep well, it will really send you off into a place you do not want to be. I think about my water intake and I think about my movement. And those are basics that any one of us can reach for. So when I think about the strength that I already have, I start with the foundational piece. It's God. And then I look at the, the bare minimum. And for my children, for myself, for my husband, I'm like, oh, what have we been eating? I'm not getting enough sleep. Put your phone down, get some rest. Um, and that's like the basic, uh, excuse me, the basic foundation of how I've been getting through. And you know what? You, you said that in, in, in a great few words. <laughs> and I know that, you know, as people of faith, we always start with the spiritual disciplines first, you know, God first. You know, uh, we seek him, we pray, uh, we fast, you know, in times of real crisis, you know, and uh, to get clarity and to hear God's voice directing us on how to make it through. But after he speaks with us, the, we get up and have to take some steps. And I, you notice where you said, you know, there are some practical things to do. It's just like when we go to the doctor, if we're sick, he will diagnose what the situation is and prescribe for us how to, you know, come out of that sickness or how to deal with it, you know, depending on whether it's short term, long term. And it's the same even with God. There are some steps that he can give us just because we pray doesn't mean we sit still and just wait for things to happen. You know, there is involvement that we have to participate oftentimes in some of the things that, you know, God is telling us how to get out. So even in with that, you know, great counselor. <laughs> He's a great counselor. He counsels. Absolutely. So I'm saying, so um, what were some of the things you used to guide your family? Some, some practical tips and steps, some, you know, things that. Uh, so once we uh, kind of move from the basics, right? Like I think the basics are really important um, and you'd be surprised um, how just adjusting some of those things really impact your every day. The next thing I really did was get some peace about the fact that the entire world is in a pandemic. And um, I think kind of that realization and understanding that God is not taken by surprise, you know, and in the word he talks about, you are going to go through pandemic times. So recognizing everybody's in it, everybody's struggling. And so the first thing I really did was give myself a little room, a little grace. Some of the things that I might have done as a mom, as a therapist, those things may not, you know, be lining up right now. I might not be able to do all the things, but really making sure that I'm doing what God wants. So here's some things that our family decided to do, and I'm hoping that it'll be helpful. Um, so one of the things that we started at the beginning of the pandemic that we've fallen off a little bit and gotten back to is really um, making sure that we're connecting with our close friends, with our families. We were doing check-in calls, texts, um, linking up. And what we know is that connection is prevention to um, serious mental health conditions and to suicide. Um, and so it may not seem like a lot, but a check-in call to your own children, to your spouse during the day, to your family members to see how they're faring during the pandemic, not only does it encourage them, but it encourages you, right? And so taking that time as a family, we really, you know, have you checked in with your, I'm asking my children, have you checked in with your god mom? Have you checked in with your friends? Um, because it that connection really is meaningful. The next thing we did was we really prioritized uninterrupted family time. Family time has always been important to us, but really um, during this time of crisis, pulling my girls in close because the world was literally shaking, you know, that is important. 
Now, family time for every family might look a little different, right? And we're okay with that, right? So for us, family time is not based on monetary things. Can we use money sometimes to do family things? Yes. But whether or not we feel like we have a lot financially or a little, we still prioritize that time. We could watch a movie together. Our family plays games together. Our most beloved activity is karaoke. Um, everyone participates. You got to dance. You got to sing. We have the microphone. And even when the mics don't work, we still use them. You know, letting our girls know that while everything else is important, our my husband is a chaplain at a um, major hospital here in New Jersey. And so he has a lot going on. Through the pandemic, he worked daily. You know, I'm working with uh, youth in crisis, but it didn't matter kind of what else was going on. Those things were important and we wanted to do God's will in those things. But our girls need to know they're first. They're our first priority. They're our first, you know, ministry. And so we, whether it's an hour or five minutes, we are putting in that work to let our girls know we love them and we're not answering the phone unless it's an emergency. We're focused on them. You want to pause or you want me to keep going? You oh, tell you me. keep going. No. Okay. <laughs> People are taking notes. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So that uninterrupted family time is so important. And one of the things that I love, it's kind of like a hobby. I'll let y'all in is I am constantly looking for what I call free or cheap fun. If it's a fair, a festival, if it's a carnival, if it's an outdoor activity, I am going, I'm looking it up. And that's such an easy way to give your, your children brought and it doesn't have to be even your biological children, the children that you love, the children in your care, uh, children at your church. It's such a great way to give them um, cultural experiences. Quite often you can go to cultural events, Black history events. You can go to Greek carnivals, all kinds of things so they can learn Hispanic Heritage Month events. And many of these events are free. Many of these events have local vendors, right? So if you're not about spending your money with huge corporations or you're looking for like-minded people because your coins mean something that is important to me you know so we're going to these local events my children know we don't have to spend a lot of money but we're learning we're laughing we're meeting people safely they're typically outside so look for those free and cheap events take a couple of minutes you know parents and caregivers and just google what's in my town this weekend you might find some great things at your local library so that's one of the things that um, we do. Something else that I'm really striving to with my, my children is to be the type of parent and caregiver that my child needs. Growing up, I really um, heard a lot of people talk about I'm being the type of parent that um, I didn't have, or I'm giving my children what I didn't have. And I like that, but really what God has helped me to understand that Sometimes when we do that, we miss what our the child standing in front of us actually needs from us because we parent out of our own need. And in the beginning, I recognized I was parenting out of my own need, what I thought was important, what I thought I should have had, what I liked from my childhood, what I loved from my parents. And the thing this pandemic has shown me more than anything is I cannot parent from a place that is focused on me, even when mm. I think it's. I have to parent the child, not have a parenting style even. I have to parent the girl in my house that is standing before me. She may not, number three may not need what number one needed. And number five might learn differently than number two. So I have to ask God in every situation to give me wisdom about the child, about the life, about the person that's in front of me, not about what I think that person needs. And that has been so empowering and refreshing during this time because it helped me to not only connect with my girls, helps me to connect in my marriage, it helps me to connect, connect with those I supervise, helps me to connect with my clients, helps me to connect with my parents, my family, my friends. What is the person, God show me, we're all living in crazy times. What does this person in front of me need? Not what do I think I should give them, right? What do you say, God, that this person needs? And for my children, I really learned I have to listen more. I really learned that my priorities might have to shift sometimes because for one girl, 
you know, working on her grades and having A's and B's might be like, okay, this is our goal. And for another girl, A's might come easy. And I might have to actually tell her, take a mental health day because you're getting some perfectionistic qualities that are not healthy mm. for you. Right. I might have to say to one girl, I know you worked really hard for that C. And although C's might not be okay with me, I know she put her everything into it. Mm. And I got to still encourage her and not say do better next time, but say, I'm proud of you right now. Mm. Right? And that's something that God has really shown me in this time because pandemic time is crazy, but it also gave us time to be quiet. And to really hear God speak. So that's something that is um, really important to me. And a part of that is me learning to apologize to my children. Mm -hmm. I think I've apologized more to them in this last 18 months than I ever have. I'm sorry I missed it. I'm sorry I yelled. I'm upset because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I need to take a nap. Mommy, sorry. I shouldn't have yelled. That didn't require all of that. Or I'm sorry I didn't tell you no ahead of time. I should have told you no three times ago. Okay. I, I, I missed it. Okay. So now you're doing this too much. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you before. Um, and so I've gotten support as a parent. I recognize I can't do it alone. I have an amazing partner in parenting. My husband is an awesome dad, just beautiful, very involved, caring, a loving, concerned, um, but we both know we can't do it alone. We have accountability partners that our girls can go to, that our girls know that we trust and our girls trust them. We also have decided to put our big three in therapy because we think it's important. We can't both be care providers to the community and see our girls struggling, mm -hmm. right? And then not give them opportunity to speak. I can't be their therapist, I'm their mommy. Exactly. Oh, that's we put, a good in, we put them in therapy because they needed someone else. And it's been great for them. I went to therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went myself because I needed it because I needed a place to release things. And so really, if, if I'm speaking clearly and I pray so a lot of this time I've learned I have to evaluate me and ask God, Am I doing the right thing or not? And then hear him clearly make changes and adjustments and do what he's called me to do every area of life. Starts with the basics. And then I dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Wow. You just, you just gave a master class. <laughs> you just gave a master class. How, how you did it, I don't know in those few words, but it all made <laughs> sense and it all resonated, you know. Uh, especially ending up with self, you know, you're helping everyone else. And I love what you were saying about parenting your children according to each one's need. That is so important when you have children. And it's important, I guess, even if you don't have children, adults, uh, you know, even with a spouse, looking at what Absolutely. that person needs, as well as, you know, what your own needs are, seeing what him, because oftentimes if you give that person what they need, they'll give you what you need as yes. well, you know, so that is so important. And plus that it makes the children feel special mm -hmm. It's because sometimes you should feel like, okay, we're all going to do this one event. Well, that might, the event might resonate with one child, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to like it. So, I mean, for you to say how to personally, you know, really look and study your children to see what their needs are and what their likes are so that you know how you can try to satisfy them. And, 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 and what I love to say, even what you said about if a child receives a grade and because often the children, some do better, some are, you know, you, they're bringing in the A, someone else is bringing in the B, someone's bringing in the C's, you know, and you want to make them all be encouraged and inspired. And especially when they bring in the C's and they look at, oh, all my other siblings are doing this kind of work. But then when you praise them for what they've done, you know, that encourages them to do better rather than Absolutely. say, I didn't meet the mark again, you know, so that is, that is so important. That's a beautiful thing to point out, you know, uh, in family life. Uh, so after that, I would ask you, were there any things that really kind of hit the family through the pandemic that you had to really give serious, anything that you can share that might have hit that, you know, because you've got so many dynamics <laughs> in your, in your family, you know, 
But I love the part where you said even the kids are going to counseling. I mean, besides yourself, I know most counselors have someone that's all they're accountable to professionally that helps too. But to allow the children to be able to do that, as well as have accountability persons that you trust that they can talk to, that must be so liberating for them. You know, they don't have to feel fearful that, you know, mommy and daddy have given some people, you know, that I can go talk to and they can trust and feel safe, you know. It's, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just blessed. And so when I'm thinking about um, kind of how life has been for the last 18 or however many months, I don't even, I'm not even counting anymore. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I want to point out that my life is really no different than anyone else's, right? Like we have struggles um, and each one of our struggles are tailor made for us, right? And so yours might look this way, mine might look that way, but they really mm. are. Once the book bag is on, no matter <laughs> what we yes. it is, it's your book bag is heavy and so is mine. Um, and so for our family, you know, I'll just kind of give some general things. We've had some folks that um, were in our, fa- our extended family that were very very sick um, with COVID. Um, Our family, our house has been hit by COVID twice. Um, Myself and the girls were all sick um, in March and my husband was sick. Was that with COVID at the time? That was even before the vaccinations were available. So I was, we were actually, we, they were actually just coming out and oh, my yeah. husband got it pretty early um, because he's a health in healthcare. Here, yeah. um, and I was like, I actually was uh, supposed to get it that week, <laughs> ironically mm-hmm. enough. And so the whole house, um, except my husband had it. Um, and then uh, he actually um, had a breakthrough case in August um, and he was sick. And then the rest of us, thankfully, were not. But that was both of those times were extremely stressful in our house. Um, and, you know, I would say that um, another thing that we really struggled with is we are a family that goes to church. We're a family that fellowships. And so we have had periods where there was no church, where we did church virtually, which is great. And I'm appreciative of it, but it's not necessarily the same as being in the house. And um, my daughters and I and all of us, we really struggled with our footing around that, right? Like, how do we create new routine, new structure, new practice, new tradition to move us um, in connection to God through this period? That was really challenging for us. And, you know, personally, our older daughter graduated during COVID, uh, graduated high school. So she lost so many things. God showed me so much about loss. We think often it's connected to physical death and it is, but loss can also be about a dream, an idea, a goal, a relationship, um, you know, employment. And it feels just as strongly as losing someone uh, to death. And so I had to watch, we watched our little girl mourn the loss of her senior year, mourn the loss of graduation, mourn the loss of prom, mourn the loss of college trips and her freshman year moving in and what that looked like and not going to classes and everything being virtual. You know, so all of our girls, they mourn their socialization, right? Whether it was at church and whether it was at school, they were completely disconnected from their friends. Um, And so those were things that really hit our family. Um, And I think on top of that, um, as a as a supervisor, as a clinician, as a mom trying to hold it together, I hit a rough patch. I hit a patch probably around July, going into August when my husband got sick, where I said, God, I can't, I just can't, I'm tapped out. I give up, you know, I don't know what else to do. (laughs) I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed because my, my, um, my full time currently is supervising folks who um, help assist youth with the highest level of emotional, behavioral health, substance use, and uh, developmental needs. So these are youth who are always in crisis. And I mean, most extreme crisis, right? Suicidal youth on a daily basis. And while suicide prevention is my thing, when you hear that day after day, after day, after day, after day, after day, it does something to you, Mm -hmm. right? 
And I said, God, I can't hold all these things. I can't hold my babies, right? I can't hold my husband and my church and my job and be a therapist and be a mom. Like I'm falling apart. I'm exhausted. And what God really showed me in this time, um, Evangelist Beverly, was about uh, something that I'm kind of calling being soul tired, right? Mm. We talk about emotional exhaustion. We talk about physical exhaustion. What God showed me is that my inner person was exhausted. My soul was crying out, right? And I had never experienced anything like that. I said, God, what is wrong with me, right? I had just enough energy to get the thing done. But when it was done, I was tired. I was tearful. I didn't know if it was good enough. Suddenly insecurities from 20 years ago were showing up. So God, what, what's happening? Is this a pandemic response? And in some ways, yes, it is. You get exhausted from the pandemic. But what he showed me was that my inner person needed to be refreshed and revived. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the work I've been doing is helping God to explain to me what rest is. Because I didn't know what rest meant. Even in the pandemic, when we were stuck in our homes, I still didn't know what rest meant. And I had to acknowledge that some of the ways that I had internalized what rest meant wasn't godly. I thought that if you rested too much, you were lazy. I thought that if you rested too much, you weren't going to accomplish the will of God. And he said, um, I think you got it twisted. And he's not talking about quitting. What rest is not quitting. He's saying to me, and I hope that this blesses somebody. I pray I explain it the way that he gave it to me. Rest is divine. It is a mm. gift that he created. God rested. So who yes, am I to you. think? That I don't need it. Rest. I don't know that he needed it, but he modeled it for us. So yes, it must have a purpose, right? And so what he showed me, rest is not about sleeping, although I did need to sleep more, back to basics. <laughs> rest is not about, did you lay down and watch a good Netflix movie? Although I did partake in some of that. <laughs> Rest is this inner peace that he gives us because we are leaning and depending on him and because we are doing what it takes to heal. Mm. That's what rest is. That is, that's what walking in his rest. And so I realized my basics were all off. I wasn't spending enough time with God. I repented and I got back in line. Mm. I didn't allow shame to keep me away. And I had been allowing shame. Oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Oh, I feel bad praying right now. I haven't prayed mm. today. I, I forgot mm. to pray yesterday. Mm. How many days has it been since I did my prayer journal? Oh my mm. God, it's been a week. And rather than let that shame keep me away, I let mm. him bring me back. I'm yeah. sorry, God, get me back on track. I changed the way I was eating. I started moving more. I changed my water intake. And then I, I took time to rest and not quit. I took time to lay down. I took time off of work. I communicated my needs to others. I put myself in therapy. I spent time hugging my girls. I started reading again. So right now I'm reading Wise Women Pray by Adrienne Blair Wise. And I'm reading I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Yes. <laughs> I took time to, to re-engage my mind. Mm. And then I took time to dream. What do I want my daughter's life to be like? What do I want to make sure that I give her? What are the gifts and the legacies that I hand out? And what are the things that I'm absolutely not giving them because they are generational curses? What do I want my marriage to look like? Who do I want to be? Mrs. Smith, who is she? Who does she want to be? Who has she been? Does she need to ask for forgiveness for some of that stuff? And does she need to make sure she needs to get back in track? Maybe. But who is Mrs. Smith? Who does she want to be to Gerald? Who does she want to be to Jay? Is she being his life partner? Who am I? What are my dreams? What are my goals? God, what is the purpose and the plan that you have for my life that COVID can't steal, that time away can't steal, that my exhaustion and soul tired can't take You've made me to be somebody and I'm going to be it. And let me tell you, Evangelist Beverly, when I got that, when I really got it, it didn't matter what anyone else said, what anyone else thought. I know I'm on track with the Lord. 
So I have decided that I am interrupting unhealthy patterns in my life. (laughs) All right. Amen to that. (laughs) That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Oh, my goodness. You know, to come to that realization of that, for the Lord to allow you that time to Mm -hmm. see that, you know, and he helps drive us towards those things we need to see. And, and, And that's the thing where we begin to do the work. That's the practical mm-hmm. things that after you pray to God and you ask him these things, he will tell you just tell what you. to do. <laughs> he will tell you just what to do. Like you said, if we need to repent, we repent. You know what I mean? And and and, and move on. You know what he said? Well, you know, so I'm glad for that. Repentance is even a gift, you know, because it Isn't frees it? us from being tied to it anymore. You know, the devil will keep us in a state where, you know, we don't want to acknowledge it because we don't want to think we did something where we have to repent, but repentance is such a gift that the Lord has Beautiful. given us. And so that we can forgive, give on. He said, you know, Paul tells us, you know, if there's any of you that have said, you know, you don't have to run from God, just run to him. And that's a beautiful thing to start with that and how he, he moves us through those different, you know, stations that we have to face. And that's a beautiful thing. And, you know, you've said so many wonderful points, but I want to take a minute to uh, let the viewers hear just a little bit of a presentation that you had given uh, on how, you know, um, we even move spiritually through counseling, you know, uh, with the professional side. So viewers will be right back. I'm just going to give you a, a moment to hear uh, Minister Mrs. Kalisha Smith on her presentation on counseling. We'll be right back. feel alone I need you to understand today understanding that um, so many of us struggle and suffer in silence you don't have to you're not alone you're not by yourself you were created uh, in the image and the likeness of God and because of that because he desires and designed for you to have purpose and to be a whole person healthy and well right you can get support If you're feeling like I don't have what it takes, you can find somebody. There there are therapists, there are counselors, there are healers, there are leaders, there are teachers, there are pastors. Get to somebody. Don't struggle alone. And while I fully believe in therapy, because I believe therapy is for support, it's for processing, it's for moving forward, it's for setting goals, it's for healing. If you're not too sure about a therapist yet, it's okay. Get to somebody with some wisdom to help you move you forward. And then maybe they can help you find somebody that you can be comfortable with, or, you know, a therapist that of your choice or someone that you're looking um, to, to get some, some support. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't let that lie creep in and tell you you're alone. Don't think that all therapists look like what you see on TV. That's something very um, important to me to say. You know, we don't all look alike. We don't all sound alike. The three of us ladies on this panel, it seems as though we have some similarities, but we're all very different in our modalities. And there is somebody out there for you that's designed to work with you on your journey. It might take a little maneuvering, but you can find that person. And therapy is not just for if you're struggling or something went wrong. It really can be to motivate you to move you to the next steps. So I encourage you, don't get caught up in um, the system of it, but utilize it to help make your best self, your best life, the life that is purpose and intended for you to lead. Because at Wise Council, we believe that you can find your purpose direction. Well, I'm sure you enjoyed uh, Kalisha's presentation on counseling. And, you know, you, you've said so many wonderful things, Kalisha. And and the fact that in the body of Christ, the things that we can do, you know, uh, along with our faith at, at the top of the list, starting with our faith, you know, uh, mm-hmm. going to the Lord and 
asking him that we can actually talk to him. He'll talk back to us and show us yes. <laughs> a great things. Like you said about your soul, you know, needing that rest and how to get it. It was so deep. And when you read the Psalms, you hear David crying out so much. It was his soul crying out, you know, to God that he needed. There's no way you can juggle life and have all these things coming at you and your soul not get tired, you know, uh, where it can, he said, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to the rock that's higher than I, you know, you can get overwhelmed. We all can get overwhelmed, have been overwhelmed and going ahead, there'll be other overwhelming, yes. overwhelming moments. But, yes. but, but you know what, that exercise of doing that just puts us, we know what to do, you know, automatically we'll start kicking into gear and say, uh oh, you know, and mm -hmm. so I thank God for all of those experiences. But, um, as far as people who are still maybe on the fence about counseling, because, you know, we have faith, you know, uh, that faith doesn't mean that it's a lack of, uh, of trust in God when we seek counseling, because, you know, it, it, in our history, in, in our ancestors, as I think I even heard you point out one time is that, and it's true, we had our great grandmothers, our aunties, that when something was wrong, we could go to them and they would give us their wise counsel, how to handle different situations or problems because they had experiential knowledge, you know, and, and even as well as they were trusting in God. Um, and especially now that you say like the family dynamics, what would you say encouraging uh, other, uh, you know, women of faith, even men of faith too, who may mm -hmm. be raising uh, children and their families as well, um, on how to kind of incorporate, you know, for their mental wellness, to maintain mental wellness, you know, like you would your own physical uh, health going forward, like to do what they should do or how they could do it. Sure. So one of the things that I'm uh, most blessed around as far as um, my practice and therapy is God really has helped me to see myself as this bridge, right? Like bridging the gap between um, being a person of faith and then also being a person who is well grounded in the profession of therapy, right? And so I am very um, understanding that there's a stigma attached to mental health concerns. There's a stigma attached to going to therapy or counseling or however, you know, one might, a psychiatrist, however people might refer to it, right? And some of that stigma has is, is found still in the church, right? And in some ways, it is a fear that is warranted. I say this all the time. I want to be clear that, you know, this his this history that we have in this country, it has a history of oppression in systems. And so when we think about mental health as a system, there is absolutely systemic oppression that has happened through that system. And so then that, that feeds the worry, that feeds the stigma, right? There were things that happened to people of color in this country through mental health systems that were damaging and hurtful. So I, I don't think that I can be a bridge without fully acknowledging that, right? Um, but also I have to acknowledge that our people um, are dying of stress. Our people are perishing for lack of knowledge in some ways, mm -hmm. right? And some of the knowledge that we don't have is around how to take care of ourselves emotionally and mentally. And so I always kind of go back to when I'm in this position of being the bridge is that God is the wonderful counselor. So if that's what he calls himself, right? There must be something to this thing, right? Mm -hmm. It must be something to this thing, right? Because even people throughout the Bible had advisors, they had judges, they had counselors, they had people that they went to that gave them godly wisdom, right? They, they went to the prophets, they heard the word of God. Um, and so I think it's really important that people of faith realize that yes, you go to God. Yes, you go to him first. Yes, he is the primary. Yes, he is the central thing through which everything flows. Yes, he is the source of all that we need. But we also know that he has given us resources to use so that we can continue to live out our lives for him through his purpose um, and to his glory, right? And so for some folks, it really is important to get with someone who has a skill set, right? So our, our, our grandparents, our um, aunties, our uncles, our, our bosses, whoever those people are that we love and our trusted advisors, they're great. You go to them, right? But if there's something, think about it this way, medically, 
you go to all those people if something's going on with you medically. You know, you drink your you drink your hot tea, you drink your ginger ale, you take a peppermint, you know, you lay down, you eat your crackers and your soup. And depending on what culture you're from, there might be some cultural things that you do, some down home practices, whatever, right? But as time goes on, if you still are having concerns with your stomach and gastric issues, at some point, you might need to go to a specialist. You might mm-hmm. have to see the doctor. And it doesn't mean that those people that you've gone to um, don't love you. doesn't mean that they are not good for you. But it means that you might need something more specialized, right? And so really, that is what a therapist is there to do, right? Because In our world, there are things that make us feel good. There are things that are therapeutic, but not all of them are therapy. You can listen to music. It can make you feel good, but it's not walking you through your history and your patterns, right? And so in a very practical sense, therapy is what helps you uh, understand what's going on in your mind. Therapy is what helps you see your history and the things that you don't want to create. Therapy is the thing that helps you walk into your healing. Okay. Um, and so I am grateful on today that there are Christian therapists. There are people of color who are therapists. There are folks that absolutely believe in Jesus, but absolutely know what CBT and narrative approach are so that you can work through your trauma. Right. Mm-hmm. They need both. And I think that we do a disservice to people when we don't let them know that God can use any tool he wants. If he can use a donkey, then he can use a person that can tell you how to make it through, right? And you hear so much about people talking about, I'm, I'm a generational curse breaker, right? I want to break these generational curses. I believe you can. I believe it starts with prayer. I believe you walk into fasting. I believe that you have to um, spend time with God. Let him give you clarity. But then I believe he might need for you to look at your history, look at what's in your family, have somebody talk you through how addiction keeps showing up over and over, have somebody talk you through about the traumas that we don't discuss, the things that don't get said, the things that we can't stay outside of the home, have somebody talk you through what are the things that you want to give your children, right, emotionally and physically, spiritually, and in order to do those things, you need some, sometimes you might need a guide. Sometimes you need somebody to walk with you on the journey. Sometimes you need somebody who's going to pray for you, but then also call you out when your patterns are going back into a cyclic Mm -hmm. nature that is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of my, my conversation around that. That's awesome. That is really awesome. I tell you, this has been uh, an invaluable conversation today with you. As always, I just I'm so grateful to be blessed here. by it. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, <laughs> um, you've covered so much and I've got so many notes <laughs> um, that I have here uh, that are wonderful, you know, that I'm going to, I'm going to be checking out myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me but too. I think, yeah, but it, 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 I, I thank you and appreciate you so much for taking time to be on the well today. And um, as usual, uh, I hope to see you in the future as well. But I just thank God for this. And uh, viewers, I know you were blessed today by what was shared. And I'm going to put up all of the information, how you can contact um, Kalisha uh, for her own private practice of wise yes. counsel. Um, and uh, she's also provided us with information, resource information that you'll see at the close um, that will bless you as well. So, but before we close, um, uh, you have, I usually ask the guests to give something encouraging and you've done that already. So the only thing <laughs> left for me to ask you to do is would you bless us with me in prayer before we end the show? Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, having me. I'm just so grateful to be here, appreciative to be with you. And this platform is just beautiful that you have, Evangelist Beverly. Very Aww. grateful. Keep praying for us, please. <laughs> yes. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, we just thank you. We praise your name. We give you glory and honor today. We're grateful, God, that no matter where we find ourselves, 
if we're very, very high and feel like we're on the mountaintops of life, Lord God, or if we find ourselves in the valley, you are right there with us. We thank you, God, that your word says you never leave us, never forsake us. And we thank you that we can trust, Lord God, what you say. So, Lord God, we pray for all those that might be listening tonight or any other time when this recording comes up for them, Lord God. We pray that your spirit, something um, that was said, something that someone hears, that your spirit will flow through it and touch the hearts of your people and those who are seeking to become your people. We pray, Lord God, that you would heal us, that you would heal our brokenness, that you would show us ourselves and then show us you and how you can touch and heal and restore. We pray, Lord God, for those people that may be soul tired. We pray, Lord God, that you would encourage them, that you would walk with them, Lord God, that you would heal them, that you would show them the path you have for them towards their healing, Lord God, if they need to connect with their pastor, let them do so, Lord God, and with their family. If they just need some quiet time with you, or if they need some therapy, God, give them the person that you have um, ordained for them, Lord God. Yes, yes. We pray, God that you would move by your spirit. We thank you, God, how you have kept us during these pandemic times. We pray, Lord God, for those that have experienced loss of loved ones, loss of jobs loss of dreams, loss of hope. And we pray that the peace of God, which surpasses every human understanding, would guard our hearts, guard our minds, keep us in perfect peace, oh God. We thank you for all things. Forgive us when we fall astray, Lord God, and thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for bringing us back to yourself. We thank you for repentance. We thank you, oh God, because sometimes we're harder on ourselves and others than you are. Yes. Yes, yes. We pray that you give us the ability to give grace to others. If you can give Peter in denying you, surely you can give us grace as well. So we pray that we live fully in that grace and love and that we seek to please you with our lives. That we live out the purpose you have for us. And all things we give you glory. And we pray, Lord God, that we follow your will, that we do it your way. And that we use only your wisdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much again. And viewers, thank you for gathering with us again around the well. We look for you next Thursday, 730. We'll be waiting on you. (laughs) Come and be refreshed and be blessed. And we'll look for you then. Until the next time, God bless you. Bye, friends.